Runk. <laughs> uh, tomorrow I'll be in Brea, California. Um, or the next day, Friday, I'll be in Brea, California. And I got some uh, other Brea, California dates. And Charlotte... And uh, Knoxville and Little Rock, Arkansas, and Irvine even. I'll be there too. And um, just uh, Nashville is in September 9th. Edmonton, Calgary, Alberta, Calgary. Um, Otto, oh, that's, uh, Montreal, Hamilton, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Crystalia.com for tickets. Um, and uh, without further ado, man, I don't like when people say that, but I said it. Uh, the next episode of Congratulations is now. I was in, we also got the Pocket State Deep merch, and we got the Grow or Die merch, which... Man, I was in the show. I did the shows in Las Vegas this past weekend, and uh, I'll tell you, the, there was a lady there that had the Grow or Die hoodie on, and I was like, that's a true fan because it was 114 degrees out, and you were wearing a hoodie. So thank you for supporting. Uh, but hopefully you didn't get heat poisoning, you know, like uh, Martin Lawrence when he was doing the jogging with the trash bags on his on his, on his his upper body. So, um, yeah, uh, I... I did go to Las Vegas, and it was too hot. Dude, it was 150. I don't—115 degrees. I I, I mean, and you don't—here's the thing about Las Vegas is they're like, oh, you don't have to ever go outside. That's that's, so it doesn't matter. And you're like—you get there, and you're like, ah, you got to go outside, though. You know? Because, yeah, I get that the places are a one-stop shop. But also, you want to go to the other places. And then they say, yeah, but they're all connected. And then you go, oh, yeah? And then the one you want to go to is not connected, right? You, you, the only one that's connected is like New York, New York. And you're like, yeah, that's cool, but I don't want to. I want to go to the, I want to go to Aria. And they're like, where is that? And they're like, it's right there. They point to it. It looks so close, and it is 19 miles away. So that's cool. Mm. So you got to go outside. You got to put on sunblock. And I'm not even a Mr. Sunblock. I don't put on sunblock if I don't have to, but you have to there because the sun is eh, close. The sun's like shaking hands with you, dude. The sun's like uh, it sun's like your best friend and your worst enemy, just right there. And um, it's just uh, it was so hot, and I had to. Man, Calvin's doing the thing where he's just like pick up, pick up, pick pick up, pick up. So I had to walk him everywhere. I had to walk with him in, on my shoulders. And we had absolutely awesome sweat dripping down the, the the armpits, which was just absolutely fabulous, dude. Just keeping the sides of my shirts completely wet. Just absolutely damp and absolutely fabulous. Just so great that it was so damp from the sides of my short shirt and then over into the top of my shorts. Just absolutely fabulous, man. Just having a swamp all over my my outfit was just absolutely great. And I had the blue palette going, you know, I had the blue, blue, uh, you know, I had the blue, blue shorts and I, you know, I matched the socks one day, didn't mean to, but you know, I guess it was subconscious. I was, I was doing a blue palette in Las Vegas, whatever. I was just so, I'm, ah, fuck, he did it again, you know, but, um, yeah, he was having a palette even though it was 114. Oh, sue him. But, um, yeah. Uh, first day went up a thousand five hundred dollars. Next day went down back to zero the next day it lost three grand the next day it lost two grand yes dude so he was in the whole five grand but it was all good because he also spent some money uh and then so if you tack it on he would lost even more money yes dude also went to see david copperfield yes man david copperfield man mr phoning it in huh uh so anyway, uh, I'll talk more about that later, but it's just like, uh, you know, Las Vegas is too hot and it's all good. So I'll talk more about that later. But right now I want to talk about, I want to talk about, uh, I want to talk about uh, Barbie. I'm pissed. I'm pissed. They say it made $155 million just in this country. I'm pissed. They say it made over $300 million worldwide. I'm pissed. But what I will say is it's going to have a sharp drop off next week and it's going to absolutely 100% still bomb. And everyone is like, well, you can't say it bombed. And I called Barbie. I said it was going to bomb. And I was right, dude. And Barbie is going to bomb. And also, here's what I realized about Barbie. It doesn't matter if it's going to bomb. Do you know why? All Mattel wants to do is make toys. 
That's all they want to do. And they can do that. They can do that with Ken. They can do that with Barbie. And it's going to make the toy sales go up. I am just so, this movie I am just not into, man. And I'm not seeing it and I will not see it. And I love Ryan Gosling, I think he's great. I think he's a great actor, and I also think that Margot Robbie's a great actor, okay? Um, and uh, I don't know, man. Remember they're going to make, make the movie with, uh, what's her what's her name? The terrible, what's her name, Amy Schumer? They were going to make Barbie with her, and then they were just like, oh, wait, well, pff, what were we thinking? Let's get actually the person who should be Barbie, right? Uh, that would have been absolutely awful. I wish they made it with Amy uh, Schumer. Would have been the worst movie of all time, you know? N- literally zero people would have gone to see it. It would have been an empty house. Uh, Amy Schumer really only can do movies where she does this on the cover of the poster. And you can't do that on Barbie, you know? She has to go like this. Oh, God, my life is sideways. Look at me. I try to fit in, but I can't because of what society says. Uh, so yeah, dude, you know, yeah. Do I have to f- eat crow on the bomb thing? And the, the th- here's the thing, dude, Oppenheimer helped it. And I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, cause they, they branded it together. It was actually very smart of them. I, how did it do it? How did they do it, dude? Barbie was so set up for fail and it's gonna, it is gonna dude. Um, but it doesn't matter cause they're just trying to sell, sell, sell toys. Oppenheimer. I'm still going to see until I realize, dude, here's the thing about these movies, man. If you don't see them opening weekend, I don't fucking want to see them, you know, and I don't want to even go opening weekend, but here's the thing. I get into the hype. I'm like, cool. I want to see it. I want to see it so bad. I'm not going to go opening weekend. Opening weekend happens. And then before you know it, I'm like, ah, I'll wait till it comes out at my house on, on Apple TV or, uh, whatever it is, uh, uh, the rental thing. And then by the time that happens, I'm like, eh, I'll just watch a movie about a killer crocodile instead. You know, I don't care that much. I don't care that much. I know, like, do I really want to sit in and watch a movie where there's, you know, where it's three hours long about, uh, and, and it's only guys talking in, in buildings and shit, you know, that's what Oppenheimer is. And there's going to be one, one, one scene where the bomb happens. And besides that, it's going to be guys talking in fucking rooms. So... You know, Oppenheimer and Barbie, they're doing great. I think Oppenheimer is going to do very, very well. I think Barbie's going to have a sharp drop off. Mission Impossible had a sharp drop off, dude, because it was because of the, you know, Mission Impossible was that was going to be the shit and then it had a, hard, a sharp drop off. And that's too bad because I love Jeremy Renner. But who knows, man? A lot of people watch Mission Impossible. That's a that's a good franchise. But Tom Cruise, man, this is the thing, man. You got to be. I don't like these celebrities that are just like, everything's great. Everything's hunky dory. I'm going to do everything. You know, they interviewed Tom Cruise, did it. I, 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 I talked about it last uh, podcast. You know, I took some clips, went out there, went stupid viral me just making fun of the shit, you know? And um, yeah, dude, I just... Ryan, Ryan uh, Gosling and, and Margaret Robbie can't do no wrong, though. They could, they could make a movie called, like, The Shit Chronicles, and uh, Ryan Gosling could play literally a fucking piece of shit coming out of an asshole. And they would be like, and and the Academy would be like, dude, we got to consider it. We got to consider it, right? His acting is stillness, dude. Stillness. Um, But yeah, I don't know. I was, I, I want to see, you know what I want to see? Sound of Freedom, dude. Can't wait to see this movie with Jim Caviezel. I already talked about this last time, but I can't wait to see uh, Sound of Freedom because, um, I got to see Jim. I didn't know Jim Caviezel actually believes that people drink adrenochrome. Is that what it is called? Adrenochrome, the blood of children to uh, become younger. I crazy. It's all good. I crazy. It's all good. It's all good, man. Hey, man. (laughs) Hey, man, you're in frequency. So it's all good, man. You know? Hey, dude. Oh, shit, man. Yeah, you were in frequency. Dude, I can't wait to see Sound of Freedom, though, because it's awesome. I think it's so bullshit that uh, the media is trying to fucking bury it because they think it, 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 it pushes QAnon theories. I don't care anymore. Push QAnon theories. I am QAnon. But yeah, dude, but Jim Caviezel, dude, the second you start talking about how, you know what I mean? Hollywood stars are drinking adrenochrome from children's blood. Hey, man, just remember, you're in frequency, okay? So it's all good, man. Uh, hey, dude, real quick, you're in a movie with Dennis Quaid called Frequency. So it's all good, man, dude. Don't even worry about it, man. So don't even worry about that, man. 
Uh, I was in uh, Vegas and it was 115 degrees. And oh, wait, before I even want to talk about that, there is a festival in uh, Detroit that happens every year. Oh, this is great, dude. Oh, I can't wait to post this as a clip. Oh, it just got me. Oh, it just got me. It just got me, Odell. Dude, there's a festival in Detroit. And I'm going to tell you right now, I have no idea what it's about. No idea. I have zero clue what it is. I still don't know. I think it's like a bizarre thing. And and I don't mean like, whoa, what the hell is that? You know, bizarre. Like, oh, that's a weird thing. It's like in the in the traditional sense, is it like a bazaar where people are, they don't put, in bazaars, you know, they don't put masks on. They just like hold the, the mask on with their fucking thing, with their little, you know, uh, stick, whatever it is. But there's a festival in Detroit. Apparently they have it every year. I have no idea um, about it. Up until three, two days ago, I am going to be in Detroit October 21st. Get your tickets at the Jack White Theater, chrisley.com. I guess that week or something is usually reserved for some thing, some festival, okay? So I booked this show in Detroit, Michigan, I don't know, three months ago? Two days ago, I get an onslaught of messages. Fuck you, dude. You're destroying jobs in Detroit. You're hundreds of people... Are, 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 are banking on this. You're ruining hundreds of thousands of dollars in, in our Detroit economy because of fucking you. And I see all these comments and I go, huh? The lowly comedian goes, huh? Hey, you're taking our date that we have every year. Our economy thrives. And I go, huh? They say, you're ruining it. And I go, Huh? I do a little bit of research. Still can't figure out what's going on. People are just slaughtering me in my comments. You piece of shit. Cancel the date now, they're saying. I got comments, DMs. Crystalia, cancel the date now. And I, now, you know what it is now. You Oh, you know what it is. You know what it is when people come at me like that. I go like this. No. I don't even know what's going on, by the way. See, here's the to- here's the toxicity of our city, of our city. Dude, you got to have a dialogue. Come at me, regular. Hey, did you know that there is a festival that's now not going to happen because... And by the way, dude, it's not going to happen because of me. If it sold well, and if it was the shit like you say it is, it would still be there. You know why? Heck. Eh, you know why, dude? Capitalism. That's why. I'm going to sell the shit out. I don't know what, I don't even know what the fucking thing is every year. I don't know what it is. The theater goes like this. Yeah, Crystalia, come perform. I say, okay. And now, three months later, oh, they're not having the, I can't hold my mask up like this. And throw a fucking beanbag at, at, at a target and make a guy with, you know, puffy pants fall in a, in a fucking dunk tank. All right, dude, don't come at me like that. Don't come at me like that. I don't give a shit now. Whoops. Ah, uh-huh. I done now. Don't give a shit. Had you sit, I want you to understand something. If these people sincerely asked me, and said, man, I'm really heartbroken. This sucks. Like, you know, usually we do this and that. I would have actually investigated it. I would have actually asked my people about, hey, what is this? I don't want to ruin this shit. But now, all good. I'll be there. It's not how it works, dude. Don't push me. That's what I say. So now, can't wait to perform in Detroit. Can't wait to roast you. Fucking cocks when I'm there. I'm coming out like this with one of these. And big pants with the fucking shitty Argyle socks. Hello, welcome to the Crystalia show. Grab your seats. Settle in for a dark tale. And then I'm just going to fucking talk about, like, shitting myself and cell phones, like, my whatever my act is, you know? Ah, some disrespect, dude. I, it, that kind of shit 
cancel your show <laughs> now. By the way, everyone who wrote me was like a cartoon avatar. I, it's just so fucking like, go fuck yourself, dude. I don't know about this. I don't know about this. It's not my fault. And me and another comedian was another night. I don't even know the guy, but it was like, it was like you and you cancel the show. And I go like this, fucking hell no, dude. I'm going to start a tour with that other comedian and I'm just going to run I'm every, every year, same year. It's going to be the Crystalia Festival now in Detroit. So thank you very much. Nice to meet you. All good. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Anyway, buy tickets for the Detroit show. October 21st, it's almost sold out. And I guess your shit wasn't going to be. I don't know. Otherwise, it would be there every year. So that's all good. Great. Now, more reason more reason for people to hate me. All good. More reason for people to hate me. All good. You can't win anyway, so it doesn't matter. So I'm just like, toss a coin to your witcher. Oh, valley of plenty. Oh, valley of plenty. Toss a coin to your witcher. Dude, you watch The Witcher? Ah, that show fucking sucks, doesn't it, man? You know what? I'm not even hating, man. What's going on? I watched five episodes of that. What's going on, huh? Hey, show. What's going on? Hey, show. Have a color in it, huh? Everything's fucking a version of gray. What's going on, man? Hey, dude, how about this? Henry Cavill? No, dude. With the long gray hair? Hey, what's going on? Dude, I can't even believe that show. Dude, that show it makes no sense. What's going on? Dude, The Witcher is, first of all, dude, it, it, what is a, a Witcher is a guy who apparently goes, <laughs> fights beasts for money, which they call coin, okay? All right, well, all good. But also, hey, uh, pick a different name because a witch is a chick and now he's just a Witcher. That's like, uh, calling a guy Barbie man or something. It's so bitch, okay? It's so bitch. As, as, as I call a guy Mr. Betty Boop. Hey, leave it for the chicks. You're not a witch. Have a different name, all right? Like, you know, Voldemort is cool, but that's taken. So, witch er, bitch. And then also, dude, Henry Cavill, he's an okay actor, and I stand by that, dude. The only time he was ever Oscar-worthy is when he cocked his biceps in Last Mission Impossible shit, okay? And when they CGI'd his mustache on the... <laughs> when they CGI'd over his mustache for the reshoots in the Superman movie because he was shooting Mission Impossible already and they wanted to reshoot the movie for DC, and they had a scene, and Mission Impossible was like, no, he can't shave. He needs to be having this mustache for the actual rest of the film filming of the movie uh, uh, Mission Impossible. And so DC was like, well, we'll just uh, uh, CGI it out. Was that Zack Snyder who did that shit? And it looked like fucking utter trash, dude, and I loved it. Oscar, and the Oscar for worst CGI goes to Superman and Batman or whatever the fuck that movie was. Superman versus Batman, I don't know what it was. But dude, The Witcher, episode four at the end, I'm like, I think maybe I understand what's going on or I'm not sure. And then all of a sudden somebody starts floating for no reason and becomes someone else. And I go like this. Can't. I, I just, these fucking, and it's a video game, dude. Video game, it's, I get the IP, the intellectual property is, you know, it's so successful. People are going to watch it anyway. But God damn, dude, that show sucks donkey balls and it's all good. But the, I'll tell you what is absolutely the shit, the song. And I'm not bullshitting. The guy, I never thought I'd like a song with the mandolin ever in my life. I never thought I'd like a song with a mandolin. And this shit bangs. He goes, toss a coin to you, witcher. Oh, valley of plenty. Oh, valley of plenty. Oh, toss a coin to you, witcher. Dude, you're witcher. Like we each have one. Um, I don't know, man. What shows are good? I have no idea. I haven't really seen a fucking good show in a while. <sighs> I saw David Copper. Oh, this is the hating episode, man. Fuck. I guess. What do I love? I got to start talking about things I love. I don't know, man. I woke up one day in Vegas and my wife is like, guess what? And I said, huh? And she said, going to David, going to David Copperfield tonight. I go like this. Oh, for fuck's sake. Inside, in my, in my brain, that's what I do. And I say, oh, cool. She said, yeah, got eight tickets. And I go, 
Oh, for fuck's sake. Everybody's coming? Yeah. Oh. So I'm like, great. Down another G. So I'm like, also, David Copperfield, though, kind of synonymous with magic. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'll watch. Kind of was excited about it, to be honest. Also, didn't have to be in a 115 degree heat. Then I Googled David Copperfield. Dude, he's worth a billion dollars. Hey, how? He's worth, he's a billionaire. It's, hey, how? It's not real. It's not actually happening. Okay. But you know what I mean? Like he's a magician. It's all fake. We all know it. Hey, he's a billionaire. That's insane to me. What he is doing is bullshitting. And he's a billionaire for that. That's crazy. I don't, I think magicians are like, I like Justin Willman. Is that his name? He's good because he's like doing the shit and it's like kind of funny and cute and shit. Like there are cool, but the second it's like, they're like, like, all right, buddy, we know it's not happening. Stop with the eyebrow shit. There, there's one part where David Carfield goes like this at the end. He just, uh, at the end of a trick, he literally goes like this. And I was like, dude, cool it. He goes, one time he went like this and then went like this. Twice, dude. Like he was so mighty. Dude, he's 66. And it is, eh, s, phone it in. Dude, it was unbelievable. <laughs> dude, he comes out and like, hey, I'm David Caulfield. So I was born at the time when I was born, I had a dinosaur, a little toy dinosaur, and, you know, I'd roll around with the dinosaur. I was in every picture. And he shows pictures of him holding the dinosaur when he was a little kid, and they're all photoshopped. And in the me, and immediately you're like, oh, these pictures aren't real, dude. And it had one gold tooth in his eye. And I always wanted to have it. And you're just like, what's going on, dude? And then he does some tricks where you're like, okay, I maybe see how he does it, but I don't know how he did it really. And then he pops a balloon in another balloon. And that is amazing. To pop a balloon in another balloon is fucking amazing. All right. He just has a balloon in another balloon, stares at it. The balloon on the inside pops. The balloon on the outside does not pop. Now, that was my favorite trick. Did he make a UFO appear out of nowhere? Yes. Did he make a Tyrannosaurus Rex, Tyrannosaurus Rex appear out of nowhere? Yes. Okay. Did he make a guy disappear in the crowd? Yes. Everyone thought that those were the best tricks. Dude, no. I only want the subtle shit because that's the shit I can't explain. Somehow, he, dude, he made a whole fucking alien ship appear, man. He made a whole fucking alien ship appear above us. And everyone goes, whoa. And I'm like, yeah, but they probably have a propeller or drones and obviously came from the stage. But dude, popping a balloon inside another balloon, do all that sort of shit all the time. But yeah, and, but this shit though, where you're just like, I'll never tell. And it's like, okay, okay, then, you know, then just do it, you know? Then just don't tell us. And just, it's like, but a billionaire? All magicians should make $90,000 a year, period. There, that should be, it should be like, that. that's the cap for the magician's league. You cannot make more than $90,000. <laughs> How many of them would still do it for the love then, huh? I admire David Copperfield, though I really do, because man... He's 66. He married Claudia Schiffer, first of all, who is like one of the hottest babes of all time. And then, uh, you know, I got divorced, obviously. Oh, so is she like a 500 millionaire or what, dude? I don't know. But this guy does, he's 66. He did three shows on a Saturday. Eh, sa, phone it in. So I was like, well, he must be loving it. And then I watched and eh, sa, phone it in. So I'm like, why is he even doing it? Anyway, um, God bless, dude. I love it. David Copperfield's cool. I want to meet him. Magicians are fucking weird, huh? Vegas is weird, right? Vegas is so weird. I was in Vegas, right? Obviously, you know this past weekend, and I'm chilling. And so many people come up to me in Vegas, you know, because they're drunk, and they're just like, whoa, dude, what's up, man? Hey, I watch your podcast or whatever. And uh, this one dude comes up to me. I'm sitting because David Sullivan was there. And of course he like 
put a hundred a hundred dollar bill in like a slot machine to have credits, and then it broke, and then they, he had to call somebody, and they came and like opened up the whole thing, and he was like, "Man, my dollars all my hundred dollar bills all caught in there. We got to wait for them to open it up." They opened it up and shit, and so I'm sitting there with them, and some dude. I see as I'm walking over, I see some dude walk by me. And you, let me just say something. You're not slick, okay? I know when you know it, notice me, all right? It's like a hot chick, right? They just walk into the Starbucks and fuck up the room, and everybody's like, oh, uh, let's not look at her. She knows what's going on, all right? Now, I'm not saying everybody knows who I am. They don't. But when somebody does, I, I can usually tell, all right? So this guy is dressed in all white, which, all right, it's fine because of how... You're in Vegas, but you could tell this guy dresses in all white, period, just outside of Vegas, which is crazy. All right. Super tall, lanky dude. I see him walk by. I see him clock me. I walk over to David, sit down, and he's telling me about this whole $100 deal, ordeal. And the guy walks up to me again, and I see him because he's wearing all white, right, at the corner of my eye. Okay. I'm not a hippo, but I see him. And he comes up to me, and he stares at me. And he stares at me for a few beats with his hands in his pockets. And he's like this. And I stare back. And I don't play that shit. Okay? I don't play that shit. I stare back until you speak. I don't break gaze. It's going to be weird, but it's going to be more weird for you. All right? The only way you can beat me with that is if you're on drugs. And this guy was on some kind of drug, apparently, because I stayed staring at him while he was going like this for, God, it was nine seconds. It was so uncomfortable. And then I finally go like this. Hey, what's up? And he says, so awesome, dude. And I said, oh, yeah? He said, so awesome. So cool, man. So cool that you're here. I mean, just experiencing this is amazing. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And he says, just absolutely. I mean, so talented. And I'm like, oh, well, thank you, man. Thank you. And then he says, such grace. And I say, oh, yeah? And he says, yeah, man, seriously. And then... I say, well, I appreciate you, man. And then he just goes like this. And I'm like, another guy walks up to me and says, are you who I think you are? And I'm like, guys, I, you know, I don't, I don't know who you think I am, you know? He's like, because I thought I recognized you. Is this guy the comedian? And the other guy's like, yeah, man, it's him. And I'm like, guys, I'm here, you know? And then the, the guy who walked up second says, oh, man, it's cool to see you. Had a, uh, like, a cigar that was, it was like, hey, bro, that's done. It was so tiny and just like, he was like, what's up, dude? And I was like, hey, man, like, these guys were acting like I wanted to be in this conversation. It was unbelievable. One guy was on like Molly or whatever, and the other guy was just a cock, okay? And he was just like, what's up, dude? And he was wearing a polo shirt and shorts, dude. It was 1 a.m. And he says, and he's smoking a cigar. And he says, what's up, dude? And I was like, hey, man. And he says, man, yeah, you're really funny. I said, oh, cool. And he says, yeah, I'm an actor, but I mostly model. And I said, oh, well, of course. Like, he's handsome, right? I don't know if he heard me or not. And then he says, yep. I said, well, that's cool. He says, it's a fucking grind, man. I said, oh, yeah, what is? And he says, acting, man. I work my ass off. Dude, all I've said so far in this conversation to either of these guys is, oh, yeah? Oh, oh, yeah? And these guys are having a full-on conversation like we're the second hour in a Joe Rogan podcast, okay? He says, yeah, I worked my fucking ass off. I said, oh, well, that's good. And he said, yeah, uh-huh, I work hard. And then a beat goes by. I look at the man in white. 
He's still just looking at me like this. And then the actor model guy says, only 25 people have gotten to my level. And I go, well, now I'm in. And I said, oh, shit. He said, yep. I said, well, what level is that? And he explains to me that he got into a school of acting that only 25 people got in. And he was one of them. And I said, oh, wow, that's really cool. And he said, yep. And next month, I'm going to an expo in Dallas. You failed. You know? But I just said, oh, that's cool. An expo in Dallas, huh? That's it. Sveg, first of all, an expo in Dallas. I mean, I don't know what the fuck. It's an acting thing. Also, Dallas isn't the hotbed for like young new actor. I don't know. Then my buddy Sam was like, buddy, this guy over here wants a picture. And I was like, oh, yeah, come over. And the guy who wanted the picture was like, oh, dude, I don't want to interrupt you. I said, interrupt me. You're fucking saving me. So I took the picture. But, bro, holy shit, man, Vegas is so weird. The only place, the only places where those types of things happen are either Vegas or New York in like the middle of the day or if you're at a nightclub in LA. That's it. It doesn't happen anywhere else. Period. Um, And then we started gambling. I started going on craps. Or not craps, sorry. I played roulette a little bit first. And this dude was this handsome dude who was like 54 just betting thousands of dollars each roulette. Like I'm talking about, there was like, there were like spins that had 10,000 of his dollars on the board. And he was just like, what does it matter? What does it matter? You know, what does it matter? Eh? What does it matter? He kept saying. And I was like, well, yeah. He's like, it doesn't matter. You put this here, you put this there. It doesn't matter. He's telling me. And he starts telling me jokes, like jokes you'd read from a book. But here's what happened. He goes like this. He puts a $5,000 chip on three. Okay? He's got a one in 37 chance of turning this into $180,000. Okay? Or whatever it is. So he puts it on three. The thing's spinning. Right before the dealer says no more bets, the dealer, or whatever you call him, because he's not dealing anything really, takes the chip and he says... I don't think you really want to make that bet, do you? Tosses it off back to the guy, and then the fucking ball lands on three. Okay? So the guy says, what the hell did you take that off for? And the guy says, well, I didn't think you really wanted to bet on it. And he says, well, that's why I put it there. And he says, nah, well, it doesn't, you know, it wasn't there, so we can't pay you. And the guy's like, I put it on there. And then he says, get the pit boss. Because this guy's owed $180,000. The pit boss comes by and is like, what happened here? We explain. And the pit boss says, no, the maximum bet here is $500. So that bet is void anyway. You're getting nothing. And then David Sullivan was there and he says, nah, man, I saw it. That's not fair. He put that chip there. He should get that money. You should at least give him the $500 bet, which is eighteen grand. Okay. And the pit boss says, this has got nothing to do with you to David Sullivan. And David Sullivan says, yes, it does. I was a witness. And I was like, that was actually pretty dope. It was a witness. It doesn't have something to do with that. So the pit boss leaves to make a call. I don't know what he called, like Jesus Christ or something. I don't know who above is above in the pit boss. But he's on the phone for fucking 15 minutes. And I'm chilling. We can't do anything else. So we're just, the Spanish guy starts saying like, like, just, he was so from a goddamn movie, it was unbelievable. First of all, waiting to see if he's going to get $18,000, cool as a cucumber, betting thousands and thousands of dollars, and says, a guy walks into a bar. And I was like, dude, are you are you kidding me? Like, are you kidding me right now? A guy walks into a bar. He opens up the box, says to the bartender, what do you think's in this little box? Tells me some sorts of, and I'm like, oh, yo, dude, we're not doing this. I got it. Now I got to pretend to laugh at your jokes. Tells me a joke. It's fine. You know, it's a written joke. 
he obviously read it somewhere and we were like oh yeah that's funny yeah and david sullivan under breath says i heard that one man so i was like oh yeah okay cool next one it was a sunny day does another joke second joke and he says i'm sorry man but i'm just waiting biding time i'm really sorry that all this is happening and i said it's okay man he says what do you guys do i said well we're all comedians and he says oh no he gets embarrassed because you're telling the fucking jokes I was like, dude it's hilarious the pit boss comes back and says, okay, we'll give you the $18,000. So this dude just makes $18,000 off of the one hand, right? And then says, thank you for guys for being with me and actually like having my back and shit. I want to come to your show tomorrow and I want to take you all to dinner. So we did. We went to dinner with a guy named Emmanuel who is Spanish. And it was fucking so good, dude. And that shit is Vegas. It was so gangster. I loved it. At least there's the two types of people in Vegas. You know, there's the fun. Vegas is nuts, dude. Look at this, Tom Cruise. Hold up. There we go. Here's Tom Cruise. I love my popcorn. Movies, popcorn. Ah. This is staged. I love my popcorn. Movies, popcorn. Dude, I love my popcorn. <laughs> Movies, popcorn. Hey, guy, you're fabricating. Dude, I don't dislike Tom Cruise. I love Tom Cruise. All the Scientology shit is very fucking weird, though. Why does, like, why is that okay, you know? It's so fucking weird that he's such a big star and a Scientologist. And, like, Scientology is so fucked up. And the media is just like, so, what do you feel about Barbie? Like, eh, eh, ask him where Shelly Miscavige is or whatever the fuck that lady's name is. So, Tom, do you do your own stunts? Hey, he's a Scientologist. All questions should be in that realm. So what's the weird thing about fucking not being able to leave or you guys got your own underwear or what's the deal? They got blackmail on you? The guy can't say shit, dude. Now he can't be him. This is my nightmare. I love my popcorn. <laughs> Movies, popcorn. Dude. I love my popcorn. Also, if you're going to fabricate this shit, at least take half the popcorn out and make it look like he's actually eating. He, he, he has eaten some. It's so mounded up, dude. You know, you know, after that, he got up and he was like, all right, so what's the next interview? God, dude. It's creepy. It's downright creepy, actually. And I love Tom Cruise, but like, it's just so fucking weird. Scientology is just, what the fuck, dude? Any religion that's like really, really, really hardcore, what the fuck? But I don't know anything about it, to be really honest with you. So, and also, I guess Jamie Foxx is okay. But he was fighting for his life a little bit, I think. To everybody that's prayed, man, and sent me messages... I cannot even begin to tell you um, how, how far it took me and how, how it brought me back. Um, uh, I went through something that I, I thought I would never, ever go through. Uh, and I know a lot of people were waiting, you know, or wanting to hear updates. But to be honest with you, I just didn't want you to see me like that, man. You know, I want you to see me laughing, having a good time, partying. Cracking a joke, doing a movie, television show. I didn't want you to see me with uh, with tubes uh, running out of me and and trying to figure out uh, if if I was gonna make it through. And to be honest with you, my uh, my sister Deidre Dixon, my daughter Corinne Marie saved my life. So hell yeah. Uh, to them, to God. To a lot of great medical people, uh, I'm able to leave you this uh, video. I cannot tell you how great it feels to have your family kick in in such a way. And, and y'all know, 
They kept it airtight. They didn't let nothing out. They protected. Yeah, that was crazy, That's actually. What I hoped that everyone could have in the moments. I can't like believe that. they kept it under wraps. Uh, now you know, by being quiet, sometimes things, you know, get out of hand. People saying what I got. Some people said I was, I was blind. But as you can see, uh, <laughs> as you can see, the eyes are working. The eyes are working just fine. Uh, I said I was paralyzed. I'm not paralyzed. Uh, but I did go through. I went to hell and back, and my road to recovery uh, had some potholes as well. But uh, damn, dude, people are like, I love how people are just so disrespectful and like, yeah, they cloned that, they cloned that fool. Like this guy almost died, and like, there's literally people out there like, yo, that's a clone, man. Look, his eyes are further apart. They fucked it up. That's a clone, man. They fucked up the first two versions. That's why it took so long. And then this is the third. This is Jamie Fox three. Um. It would be great if he was like, man, I went to hell and back. And just a beam of light came out of his fucking mouth. And you were, and that's how we realized that we were under attack. Oh, hell yeah. That would be amazing. <laughs> so, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm coming back and uh, I'm able to work. So and then I'm also some people are like, oh, this is PR for his new movie, which is just like, just so disrespectful. The guy almost died, you know? Uh, uh, the people that let me work. Um, and I just want to like say uh, I, that I that I, I love everybody and I love all of the love that I got. Yeah, that's cool. And man, you know, I know they talk about people crying on videos. You know, you can do take two, but yeah, that's true. That's crazy. Here, here's 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 honestly for real. I'm being honest. This is how this is Tom Cruise watching that video. Look at this comment. Not into Scientologist, TBH. I have avoided his movies for over a decade. Cool, man. You're really sticking it to him. Guy's a fucking trillionaire. Wow. It, God, Scientology is so fucking weird, man. What's this here? Oh, this is my favorite when people alienate fans. Doja Cat shits on fans, slams kittens, nickname, grow up, get a job. I guess that's what her fans are called, kittens. Is that right? Doja Cat appears to be opening up a can of tough love on her staunchest fans, rebuking a pet name they've given themselves. And it, I mean, that is so fucking dorky to be calling yourself kittens, dude. Like, for real. I mean, we call ourselves babies, but that's fucking badass. The rapper singer has been getting some side eye from her loyal supporters over the My fans don't name themselves shit. If you call yourself a kitten or fucking kittens, that means you need to get off your phone and get a job and help your parents with the house. S I mean, dude, biting the mouth that friggin' feeds you. Um, what is this shit? The rapper singer has been getting some uh, It all appears to have come to a head this weekend when she shot down a term... A lot of them use, which is kind of in the vein of Nicki Minaj stands. Dude, women, the only person that doesn't, the, the women fucking hate women. You know what I mean? Like, even if they don't know, they see a woman doing better than them or coming up and they go, fuck that bitch in their head. And then they say, hi. This is the worst part about women is that they fucking hate women dude i'm i'm generally speak generally speaking um but also dodgy guys obviously crazy so um i just it's so crazy how women do that shit they'll tear you the fuck down dodgy guys cool though man um Yeah, she's a fucking huge singer, huh? Bro. This shit. I can't believe this happened the other day. Dude, David Sullivan doesn't eat cheese, okay? 
He doesn't eat dairy. Because he says, I'll shit my pants, man. I don't want to do it to you. David Sullivan, my friend, if you're new to this podcast. And he says, so he's over one one night and we're eating. We're going to, I say, let's order burgers. And he, and so I Postmates, a burger place that I want. It's me, one of our friends, and David, okay? And David's the kind of guy who, anybody who makes any sort of amendments on food, I'm like, all right, dude, you know, just get it the way they want you to get it. They figured it out. Stop it with the fucking, the, the Postmates with the, ooh, ooh, but no onions, but substitute fucking pickled onions. And you're just like, oh, fuck. No. What do you want? What do you got here? If I want to make some, I'll make it at home. You know? So I I look, I pick the burger, and I say, what do you want? And he says, oh, you can just give me what you get, but actually, let me just actually change it because I want to get no cheese and no mayo because I don't get, I don't get, I don't eat dairy and we're going to be watching a movie and I don't want to be fucking blasting you to Mars. And I'm like, then get something completely different because you know why? Because they're going to fuck it up for me. You know what I'm saying? Right? You know what I'm saying? If you order one thing and then you order the other same thing, but it's a little bit amended, they're going to make them both that way. And I'm not going to get my party going for me. My shit's going to come mayo-less and cheeseless. And he was like, man, come on, man. I want to get the burger. So I was like, dude, okay, okay, fine. But if it comes fucked up and if my shit's fucked up, dude, look at me. And I made him look at me. I said, you better not fart. Right? You better not fucking fart. Because it'll be worth it if you don't fart. If my shit comes like how a communist gets it. I don't even know. Do, are there, do hamburgers exist or do you just get a cheeseburger without cheese? Who the fuck eats a hamburger? That's crazy, dude. To be like, like, have you even seen hamburger on a menu since 1981? That's like Russian or something. So I ordered the thing and our friend Jerica is like, oh, uh, I'm going to get one, a, a, a different burger. Hers is regular with cheese and shit, but not the one I got. But David got the one I got without the cheese and not the mayo. Mayo's cool because I got mayo. If that doesn't come, okay. If the cheese doesn't come, I'm fucked, Right? So the burgers come, Jerrica gets the food, brings it up, checks the burgers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have two burgers that David Sullivan would like. We have no burgers Crystalia would like. Ladies and gentlemen, we have two mayoless and cheeseless burgers, and Jerrica got hers the way she wanted. Ladies and gentlemen, David Sullivan better not fucking fart. Ladies and gentlemen, here lies two fucked up hamburgers before you. And thank God they're from a really great high-end burger place. Otherwise, Chris DeLeo would be so fucking goddamn mad that he would get an ulcer. Because at least it'll be good without the cheese because it's a high-end place. So I'm like, you know what, dude? God damn it, motherfucker. I told you dude and then Jerrica's like dude you got white american cheese you could just heat it up and put it i'm like oh dude dude dude, dude. everything's got to be the same temp if it's different temps in the fucking layers what am i doing it's not dessert you can't get a brownie heated up with also ice cream on it you can do that for dessert but this is a burger so i go give me the fucking thing start the goddamn movie i'm i'm just i'm gonna eat it i guess i'm gonna pretend it has cheese on it <laughs> I'm eating the fucking burger. It's still kind of good, but I'm so pissed off. I shit you not, dude. We're halfway into act one. Bro, David Sullivan farted so loud. I thought a boat was docking. It was so, it was so, dude, it was one of those. Like, and I, and I go, oh, come on. And I didn't get the cheeseburger. That's what I say. And bro, it was so maddening. I said, well, well then what the fuck? You said it was dairy. He said, hey, dude, he said, I don't know, man. It must've been a little mayo on that or something. Bro. Uh, pow.
to the moon. Now I got to watch the fucking movie all the way over on the other side of the couch. And he's lighting them up. He's just lighting them up. And I say, dude, keep them inside. And he says, nah, man, that's bad for you, dude. And then I say, no, it's not. It's fine. And then Jerrica says, actually, it's bad for you. And I go, oh, all right. You know what? You had your cheeseburger. You're happy. Why don't you pipe down? It's not bad for you to keep your farts in, man. And I read an article where it's like, it is kind of bad for you, but it's not, though, man. Like, what is it? Take your life expectancy down? No. What do you get? His tummy ache? What does it go back up in you? And you fucking burp. You burp later. That's what happens. I cannot believe that that happened. And that's the kind of shit that's the worst kind of shit. Oh, no. This guy... This is what made me think of it. This guy farted. This guy farted while he swung the golf club. While he swung the golf club. I'm pleased to announce that Francesco Molinari just farted when hitting his first tee shot. Come on. (laughs) Be real. It's real? (laughs) Dude, that's cheating. He got propelled. No, they're clapping. They don't know. The quietness of it. Oh, dude. Here comes Francesco Molinari. Needs par. Oh, boy. Okay, well, that was... He might have shot a little bit. Uh, the, the best part was it wasn't even a good shot. It went into the fucking roughage. Holy crap. The roughage? What'd I say? Yeah, yeah. What's it called? The rough, roughage? Um, that is crazy. Went into the cabbage. Um... I, yeah, the, I guess fucking, man, it's going to be, I can't believe, it's so, you know what's crazy is how quickly the world's changing. Like Twitter changed to X, I guess, or it's going to or something. Um, Elon Musk, and that's so weird that it happened after, like right after the threads thing. It must be in some sort of trouble. I mean, it has to be. If it's rebranding and shit and Twitter's just been getting more and more awful. I, I actually don't fucking know. I don't use Twitter. I just know it's awful. Um, it's always been awful. I know it hasn't always been awful. In the beginning it was awesome. You know, it was like, oh, we were figuring uh, who knew that it was gonna become this huge fucking thing. Um, but Twitter is now X, I guess. Did he make any sort of statement about it? Or or, or uh, he did? Um so I guess they're rebranding it. And people will find a problem with that. But I guess this is, I don't know if Twitter's days are limited or what, or, or numbered, I should say. Um, I, I don't feel like that fucking, uh, what is it? Uh, Threads is really picking up any steam. Uh, I, although I don't know. I, I just, I just kind of like look at it every now and then just because it's a part of Instagram, which was cool that he did that. But I don't know. Isn't, isn't it all... It's all fucking garbage. It's all garbage. Okay, well, that's good. That's it. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Oh, leave a me- uh, message uh, under here. Uh, like and subscribe. We'd appreciate it. And uh, also, it would be really cool if you left a comment. Thanks a lot. Um, and share it with your friends. This podcast is uh, is really great. And it's really great because of you guys. Because you, you, it's not really great without you guys. So thanks. And uh, if you want to sign up for the Patreon and get the extended version of Congratulations, the uncut, unedited version of Congratulations, each episode, go to patreon.com slash crystalia. And also, there's an extra episode a month. There's like 30 something episodes now that you can go look at if you just. Go and uh, go to patreon.com slash crystalia. And it's like six bucks. So thank you very much. Appreciate you. Uh, and don't forget to pick up with that merch. Okay. See you guys. Uh,